مساء الخير. Right now I want to keep talking about الفعل الناقص but this time I want to focus on derived forms 2 through 10. The great thing about the derived patterns of الفعل الناقص is that they are very 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 regular. If we know how one verb works in a derived pattern with الفعل الناقص we can know how any other verb in that wasn is going to work. So unlike form one of al-Nabisa where we need to think about the relationship of various vowels and know a little bit more and able to predict what's going to happen, this is relatively simple. I know that this chart looks a bit intimidating, but once we understand the logic behind it, once we understand the little idiosyncrasies of each wasn, we're going to know 95% of what we'll ever need to know for any other verb in that pattern that comes our way. I've picked a different real verb for each pattern just so that we have some useful examples. We've got غطا in form 2, to cover, as in cover with a blanket or cover in terms of news. نادى, which means to call or cry. Out. أعطى, which means to give. تمنى, which means to hope. تساوى, which means to be equal to each other. انقضى, which can mean to be past. Uh, intaha, which means to be finished, and istada, which means to summon, like a king summoning a subject to his castle or something along those lines. So in the past tense, all of these verbs work exactly like I described in the first video on Form 1, Fernabis. The good news, though, is that instead of having to think about what our vowel might unpredictably change into, in every single one of these derived patterns for first and second person conjugations, the elif maksura that we see at the end is going to turn into a yap. So for example, if I were saying I gave in the past tense, I would say ana ataitu. Or if I were talking about how I hoped, I would say tamanaitu, etc. That's true for every single past tense verb. And just like Form 1 of al Nakisa, the third person feminine singular conjugation, hiya, is going to drop that vowel entirely. So she gave would be hiya adat, or she hoped would be hiya tamannet. We would drop that ya or that elf maksura and we wouldn't see it at all. You'll also notice that in the present tense, we can predict this vowel in the huwa conjugation or in any conjugation without a suffix on the basis of the vowels that form the pattern. So, for example, in يغطي, if you remember that that pattern, that form 2 pattern, يفعل has a kasra on the second to last letter, then we can predict that that kasra is going to turn this last vowel into its longer counterpart. In this case, a ya, yeah, right? So in form 2, it'll always be a ya yeah in a huwa conjugation. Or similarly in form 5, where we have yatamanna, form 5 in the present tense is yatafa'al, where we have a fatha. So we can predict accurately that that fatha is going to turn the last vowel into an elif maksura, which is going to ma uh, match the a uh, sound of the vowel. Uh, just as with form 1, فعل ناقص, if we have a present tense conjugation suffix, we usually drop that vowel entirely before we add it on. So if we're saying all of them hope, well, huwa would be yatamanna. Oops. Yatamanna. And now we want to add that un suffix onto the home version, the third person plural version, and we're going to just drop that elf maksura and wind up with yetamanun. We're not going to say yetamanun, that's just not how it's going to work. The one exception again is dual forms, so we would always keep the ya. Uh, and say, for example, yatamaniyan. And there's a case 
where the Elf Maxura is going to turn into a Yap, but that's also highly predictable. We can assume that that's what's going to happen in a case like that. The Mostar patterns are a little more unusual, perhaps, but once we know one Mostar for one Wesen, we're going to know how to construct the Mostar for that same Wesen. As you can see here, the, the Masadir for forms 2 and 3, the Tagtiya and Munada, both have Tamarbuta at the end, and that's going to be true for any other Mostar we construct for a Fa'al Naqis in those patterns. Forms 5 and 6 have a Ya at the end of the pattern, that's a little bit irregular, but once again, we will know for any other 5 or 6 Fa'al Naqis that that is how we're going to construct the Mostar, and 4, 7, 8, and 10 are going to have that final vowel morph into a Hamza if we're constructing a Mostar. Slightly irregular, slightly idiosyncratic, something that we need to keep track of, but once more, once we know that, we can predict with great accuracy that that will be true for any other defective verb that we use in a Mostar form. One final note, just as with Form 1, the active participles, the asma fa'il, of all of these awzen are going to be manqus, they're going to be defective too. Which means that in formal Arabic, we'll often see them with a special set of case endings with that final vowel dropped. So if we were talking about a hoper, one who hoped, using yatamanna, in marfu'a, it would be mutamannin with kasra tanwin or a giver, one who gives would be muatin. There are separate videos on construction of ism fa'il, the active participle, and on how we use al ism manqus, the special words, but because we have vowels at the end of all of these verbs. We're always going to get an ism manqus if we're creating a masculine singular noun from them. As always, my advice to you is pick just one fa'al naqis in each pattern. You can use these if you want. If you have another favorite verb that happens to work, you can use that instead. And make it your point of comparison. Since these, these derived fa'al naqis patterns are extremely regular, you can use them to identify and construct and manipulate any other fa'al naqis you might encounter as you communicate in Arabic.